Hello guys, we are going to continue with a brand new chapter of uh, Lower 6 Semester 1 where we are going to continue with Chapter 2, Electronic Structure of Atom. So what we are going to do, learn in this chapter is we are going to learn electronic energy level of atomic hydrogens. We are going to learn about what is actually atomic orbitals. Electronic configuration, then we are going to learn classification of element into SPDF blocks in the periodic tables. So based on the past equation analysis, you know that this is a very basic uh, chapter that you all have to somehow learn and understand. So with that let's begin our lessons. So uh, according to Maxwell theory, eh, an electromagnetic wave has an electrical field component and a magnetic field component. So electromagnetic radiation is the emission and transmission of energy in the form of electromagnetic wave which travel at 3.0 times 10 power of 8 uh, meter per second. So this is also known as the speed of light. And electromagnetic radiation is characterized by frequency and wavelength where we say it's that frequency uh, F is equal to the speed of light C times the uh, over the wavelength. So F is equal to C over lambda. So here is an example of a series of wavelength that you and I are familiar with. So we have, uh, for example, from the lowest uh, from the lowest frequency of the AM radio of FM radio to a higher of UHF TV cellular phones to uh, Microsoft uh, microwave ovens. Okay, to heat lamp, to sun lamp, and to X-ray. So uh, you can see in here, these are the types of radiation at the specific wavelength and also frequency. And in here, uh, showing to you down here is the visible uh, visible light spectrum. Huh? And this spectrum is actually a continuous spectrum. So what is actually a continuous spectrum? I'll introduce slightly later. Yeah. So when a light consists of continuous distribution of all possible wavelength spanning the entire visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So just now what you see is one, this is a continuous spectrum. However, when a narrow beam of white light is passed through a glass prism, so different wavelengths travel through glasses at different rates. So as a result, the white light dispersed into a component's color, ranging from the red at the, red at the longest wavelength to, uh, at the end of the spectrum, which is around 700 nanometers, to violet at the shortest wavelength, which is around 400 nanometers. So in here, as you can see in here, so they are producing color at the specific lines. So such species, uh, such spectrum is also known as a discrete, uh, discrete line spectrum. So what are the differences between a line spectrum and also continuous spectrum? So when a radiation of a particular source is passed through a spectrometer, it will be separated into components of different frequencies producing a spectrum. So from what we see just now, this is a continuous spectrum. So a continuous spectrum is one where light is emitted over a broad range of wavelength or frequency, showing emission of a wide range of energies. So the spectrum is smooth and continuous. Whereas a line spectrum, as illustrated to you in here, uh, is one where exact frequencies of wavelength appear as lines, indicating that only certain amount of energy are emitted and none in between those energies. So line spectrum is normally produced by atom, uh, atoms that have been excited and therefore is also called as atomic emission spectrums. So we're going to look into details about what is at, uh, atomic spectrum later. So now let's have a look at why uh, when you use a uh, hydrogen gas as our sample when it is discharged uh, when it is subjected to an electrical discharge hydrogen molecule dissociate to form hydrogen atom according to the equation so half f2 give h gas so this hydrogen atom then absorb different amounts of energy and this and the electron on each atom since hydrogen only have one electron will raise to higher energy level so spectroscopy studies the uh, spectrum at atomic hydrogen and identified a several species of spectral line that produce at different regions using different electromagnetic spectrum. So uh, in our syllabus here, we're going to study three regions where we are going to study where we have uh, ultraviolet region, visible region, and also infrared regions. Okay, so uh, later you'll see that the, the series of the line spectrum produced by the ultraviolet ray is called as a Lyman series. Whereas the series of spectrum produced at visible ray is called as a Balmo series. And you can also have a series of spectrum produced by the infrared, uh, uh, infrared emissions is called as a Pestion series. So what are the differences? Later we shall explain later. 
So this line form from spectrum are specific and can be quantized according to the radiation sources by using a Rydberg equation. So Rydberg equation is 1 over lambda equals to R H time 1 over N1, uh, N1 square minus 1 over N2 square, where lambda in here is wavelength in meter, N1 is the ground state energy level, N2 is energy level where electrons fall from compared to the ground state, and R H is the Rydberg constant at 1.097 times 10 power 7 meter per uh, meter. Uh, per meter. So, hydrogen spectrum produced under different sources produces different series with different characteristics. So, table table below shows the hydrogen spectrum produced under uh, ultraviolet ray and also visible ray. So, if you, you have a um, series of the line spectrum produced by ultraviolet, uh, ultraviolet rays, you have produced what we so call as alignment series. Whereas when you are produced by using visible rays, you produce a bubble series. So you, uh, the series produced by ultraviolet is usually used to calculate ionization energy of hydrogen gaseous system. However, uh, for the line spectrum produced by using visible ray, they can be used to determine the wave produced by each spectra given by the dispersion of light. So under such emission spectrum, an electron from higher energy level will settle at ground state energy level at n equals to 1. Whereas for visible ray, uh, the electrons will settle at the energy level n equals to 2. So the series of the convergent lines produced has a higher frequency compared to the, those series of convergent lines produced by the visible ray. So we are going to character this uh, slowly one by one. Okay, introducing next is the Bohr models of hydrogen atoms. So Neil Bohr suggested a model of hydrogen atom that predicted existence of the line spectrum. He then outlined three postulates about hydrogen atoms where number one, hydrogen atoms only have certain allowable energy levels, where Bohr called it as a stationary states. So each of these states is associated with a fixed circular orbit in the electron around the nucleus. Number two, atom does not have radiated energy while while in one of the stationary state, that means an uh, electron will have the same energy levels uh, when moving at the same orbits. 3. The atom changes from another stationary state, which is changing from one level to another, only by absorbing or emitting a photon whose energy equals to differences of the energy levels between the two states. So therefore, if you have uh, energy in state A, or in another word, energy in the uh, level A, minus of uh, energy in the state B, or energy at the level B. Or, we can say that delta E is equals to HF, or delta E is equal to HC lambda. So from the angle of delta E is equal to HF, so uh, delta E is a difference of the energy in the two energy levels. H is what we call as the Planck constant. So where Planck constant in here is 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 joule per second. Okay, so now uh, we're going to have a look about the explanation of the formation of the line spectrum. So line spectrum is result when a photon of a specific energy is emitted at the electron moved from the higher energy state to a lower one. Therefore, more models explain that an atom at atomic spectrum is not continuous because atom energy only have a certain discrete energy uh, at certain discrete levels or states. So, uh, how do we actually describe these states? So, we use what we call as a quantum number. Okay, so the quantum number where we have n at least with one, two, or three, is associated with the shell of an electron orbit, which is directly related to the electron's energy, where we say is that lower the n value, closer the orbit to the nucleus, and lower the, hence lower the energy levels. So when electrons is in the first orbit, or n equals to one, so we say that orbit it is the orbit closest to the nucleus. So the hydrogen atom is in the lowest energy levels, therefore called as ground state. However, if hydrogen atoms absorb a photon whose energy equals to the uh, equals to the difference between the first and second energy levels, thus electron moved from the uh, first energy level or first orbit to the second orbit, where n equals to two. So the next orbit. Uh, so when this happened. The electron is in the second or any higher energy level. The atom is to say to be an excited state, where the process it is where it is a process where electron move from a ground state energy level to higher energy level. So this process is also known as absorption. So diagram next shows you what is an absorption process. So now, electron moved from a lower energy levels to a higher energy level, the name of the process is called as absorption. So at this moment, we say that electrons are excited.
However, the hydrogen atom in the excited state emitted a photon of the same energy and then eventually re returned to the ground state. Okay? So, because uh, energy at a higher energy level is unstable, so eventually it will return back to the ground state and at the same time produces an uh, uh, electromagnetic wave. Where this electromagnetic wave is the one that will produce the spectral line. Okay? So, um, so uh, when a sample of hydro gaseous hydrogen atoms is excited, different atoms absorb different quantities of energy level. So each atom has one electron, but so many atoms are present that all energy levels are populated by electrons. So electrons, uh, there are also possibility where the electrons drop from the uh, drop from the third shell, or which is the third orbit, to the first orbit. They are also uh, emitted a photon that are created infrared. So the visible arises when electron is fall at n equals to two. So in the first excited states. Okay. So when an electron drop from an outer orbit to an inner one, the atoms emit a photon of a specific energy that gives rise to the spectral line. So in this series, each electron drops and thus and each emission has the same inner orbits. At uh, that is the same value of n equals to 1 and Rydberg equation where the or orbit uh, radius is proportional to n square value. So energy diagram below uh, next to it shows how the ultraviolet series is produced in here. So um, now because this system only work works for one electron, so it works beautifully for the hydrogen atom for one electron species such as helium plus, Li2 plus and also Be3 plus. So in here, this is the samples of what I said that um, different uh, radiations will produce different lines in here. So if you have for ultraviolet series, and eventually uh, electrons at the higher energy levels will fall at the ground state n equals to 1. So this series is called as Lyman series. If you use um, invisible line, okay, if you use visible light, so eventually all electrons will fall at the energy level n equals to 2. So when energy level falls at n equals to 2, the series of the spectral pro line produced is called as a Balmer series. And finally, when electrons fall from higher energy levels and you stay at ground state energy level n equals to 3, this is due to the infrared emissions that produces a passion series. Okay, so now if I make these orbits become flat, okay, so this is how it will look like. Okay, so in here, when electrons fall from the second energy level to the first energy levels, eventually this will produce what we call as the first line in the Lyman series. Whereas electrons fall from the energy level n equals to 3 back to n equals to 1, therefore you produce the second spectrum. So the second spectrum is called as a second line. And if electrons fall from the fourth energy level to first energy level, you will be addressed as the third line in the Lyman series and so forth until you have n equals infinity that falls to the n equals to line. So this line is called as the last line. So note a few occurrences where in here you can see that eventually as the energy levels become higher, the line spectrum produce eventually what we say is converge. The terms converge means that lines, uh, the line spectrum has become closer and closer until when it reaches the last line, too many lines are too close together, eventually that forms the broad bands of the last line which is n equals to infinity to n equals to 1. So this is how the line spectrum is eventually produced. So one of the usefulness of Bohr theory applied when calculating the energy levels is which he derived from the classical principle of electrostatic attraction and circular motion, where uh, he derived his equation as energy is equal to negative 218 times 10 power of negative 18 joule z square n square. So for hydrogen atoms, since the atomic number z is equal to 1, therefore a e is equal to negative 218 times 10 power of negative 18 joule 1 minus n square, where the n here refers to the energy level. So if the ground state under Lyman series of n is equal to 1, so the energy of the ground state energy levels is E equals to negative 2.18 times 10 to the power negative 18 joule. So that is why if you look back at the graph in here, so this is where we say that the energy is quantized at negative 2.18 times 10 power of negative uh, 10 power of 18 joule in here. 
Okay, so you can see from the unit, it is uh, times 10 power of 20. So that is how we get the values in here. Now, negative line does not show that it has negative energy. It's just that usually uh, electrons always say that when uh, energy levels at the lowest is the one closest to the nucleus, that is where it has the least energy. So that is why it has the most negative value. So not that, uh, true the energy value is negative, however, as mentioned above, under zero energy where E is equal to zero kilojoule where N is equal to infinity, so in terms of magnitude, more energy will be released when electron fall from N equals to infinity to N equals to one. So if the ground state energy level is higher, less energy will be less released. So uh, how to find the differences between the, uh, the electron or the emissions produced by two different spectral, uh, by two different energy levels? So we have we can be compared. So as mentioned just now, delta E is equal to E is at uh, state A minus E at state B. Okay. So you have delta E is equal to negative two one eight times ten power negative eighteen times one over n two square minus one over n one square because it's minus. So you have to bring two point one eight to the front, making it delta E is equal to two point one eight times ten power negative eighteen, uh, one one minus or uh, one over n one square minus one over n two square. So this is the uh, this is what it means by uh, each energy. Uh, with each line spectrum produced, the energy can be quantized in here. So this equation is also known as the Bose equations of energy. So uh, for the derivation of B also allows us to find back the uh, wavelength to produce in the absorption or emission process. So use back the Planck equation just now, where we have E is equals to HF or E is equals to HC lambda. Eventually, you'll find out that we can eventually relate back to the Rydberg equation that we derived earlier. This 1.10 is actually 1.097 uh, that we deduced earlier. Okay, so this is how the relationship between the Bose energy, uh, Bose energy uh, equations and also Rydberg equations. Okay. So uh, generally, that is how the both of the system works. Okay, okay. So um, if we have chances later, I'll show you some examples in our uh, later of the lessons. The next that we are going to introduce is ionization energy. So ionization energy of one is uh, of one mole of electron in a hydrogen atom that can be calculated using Bose equation. So ionization energy equation can be written as H gas gives H plus gas plus E minus, where the delta H has a positive kilojoule per mole. So this energy is called as ionization energy. So in order to remove an electron from the hydrogen atom, so electron must at least reach the convergence limits where uh, energy level at n equals to infinity. So substitute to the uh, Bose equation energy equation just now, we have 2.18 10 to negative 18 joule 1 over n1 square minus 1 over n2 square. So you substitute. So what? Uh, n1 square, so 1 over 1 square minus 1 over infinity square. So 1 over infinity eventually equals to 0. So they will make 1 minus 0, therefore equals to 1. Therefore, your difference of energy level is 2.18 times 10 power negative 18 joule. So this joule is for one electron. So since uh, in one mole of electron, we have 6.02 times 10 power of 23 hydrogen atom. So delta H, which is the ionization energy, is equal to 2.18 times 10 power negative 18 times the Avogadro constant, 6.02 10 power 23 multiplied by 1 kilojoule over time time 10 power of 3 joules so your uh, ionization energy in here at the end is 1310 kilojoule per mole so what does this mean it means that to remove one mole of electron from the ground state n equals to 1 to convergence limit n equals to infinity a total of 1310 kilojoule is required okay okay so with this that is all for the hydrogen atom so we'll continue on our next lessons about uh, orbitals thank you